Hey guys, welcome back. So this is part two. Uh, as you can see now, we've taxied and we're just holding short of runway 27 right at Heathrow. Uh, so, a couple of things we need to do before we uh, before we take off. First thing we need to do, we should have probably said this in the last video to be fair, is once everything's programmed in and we're all in managed mode here, all set to go, uh, the first thing we do need to do is turn on the flight director and you will see that immediately brings up some uh, some writing in different colors that's actually quite important okay so if it's blue that means that the aircraft is prepared and ready to uh, to, to do as uh, as you've asked it to and you'll see here that this says uh, lever MCT uh, the auto throttle is not yet on and neither is the autopilot what you will see is once we get onto the runway and we apply full throttle or toga power uh, the auto throttle comes on automatically that's normal don't worry about that that's the Airbus one of the things that uh, one of the things that it's designed to do so before we take off a couple of little things that we need to do turn on the auto brake set that to maximum that sounds like a strange thing to do before taking off however it is in case we have a rejected takeoff or bird strike or engine problems anything like that you want the maximum brakes engaged because the moment you then pull the, uh, the throttle back to idle then the aircraft will slow down as quickly as possible the other thing you need to do is arm the spoilers again that is in case we need a rejected takeoff uh, there's a couple of ways of doing that you can assign a hot key to it which I've done here so I can just pull the speed brake lever up or I think you can actually hang on let me try this I think you can actually pull it oh there you go look you can actually pull it up there the other thing to make sure that you've done is once the engines have started uh, return the start selector back into the normal position and turn off the APU you don't need those all right once we're uh, we're ready to line up on the runway we want our landing lights on Oops, uh, taxi lights, hard to see in the dark isn't it? Taxi lights taken to takeoff mode and also the strobe lights on as well. So, well, I can see a bit more of the ground there now. So you also notice as well, I've changed the QNH to the current setting. I've not discovered a place yet in the flight simulator where you can find that because uh, I'm not convinced that the ATIS readout on the air traffic control is uh, is always accurate i tend to just use an external source an app on the phone uh, which i've got gives you the latest weather uh, and of course you can change it between uh, hg and hpa for uh, for where you're flying so if you're in the united states you'll be using qnh uh, you'll be using uh, hg and if you're in uh, europe you're more used to uh, more used to reading that 1022 so what i'm going to do is we're going to line up on the runway and prep for uh, for takeoff. Also set flaps one as well. There we go. Okay, so we'll land up and ready for takeoff. As you can see down here, the ground spoilers are armed. You'll only get that message, I think, on uh, if you've got the A320 mod, uh, which is out at the moment. All right, so what's going to happen is I'm going to ex uh, advance the throttles to uh, toga, which is basically full power, 
and you want to be pushing forward ever so slightly on the side stick down there until you reach about 100 knots when you get to 100 knots pull it back to the, uh, the central position and you can see on here that it's already predetermined that our V1 speed is here and then we've also got the rotate speed shortly uh, shortly after once you hit that pull back slightly and we should be in the air once we get in the air as I say you will notice the auto throttle will come on automatically and I'll talk about that as, uh, as we get airborne so here we go You can see Mantoga SRS is lifted here and we're heading down the runway 100 knots stick to the center pass V1 and there we just start to rotate now and pull back positive rate of climb so we take the gear up and you can see that the auto throttle is already on however at the moment it isn't actually doing anything once we get a little bit higher you'll see lever climb is now marked what we need to do now is move the throttle levers to the CL detent and we'll see that that has changed to thrust climb so we've now got climb thrust enabled and I'm still not controlling the airplane because I'm talking to you so we're actually uh, pitching up a little bit too much so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to turn on the autopilot so the airplane will look after everything there we go so autopilot's now on and it's starting to turn to follow the course that we've already predefined The red tape here is the maximum speed the aircraft can go and that is because at the moment we've still got our flaps up so uh, flaps down rather so let's pop the flaps up we see the red tape disappears and the aircraft now decides oh, we can actually speed up so we get power from the engines again under 10,000 feet the aircraft will not exceed 250 knots you can see the magenta triangle there that's the speed that the aircraft is aiming for whilst ever it's in managed mode and I told the aircraft before we set off that we want to climb to 5,000 feet and that is what it's done so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up to our cruise altitude which I believe was 18,000 feet I'll double check that there we go 18,000 feet so We've now turned it to 18,000 feet. I'm going to push that in again, and that tells the aeroplane it needs to be in, begin climbing. Ground spoilers are still armed. We need to disarm those. There we go. course once we pass the transition level for London Heathrow which as I said in the previous video I couldn't remember what it was off the top of my head uh, but it's certainly below 18,000 feet so we want to pull that to standard pressure now for me the climb rate of the default A330, uh, A320 is uh, is a little bit harsh that's that's quite an impressive climb ratio uh, it's not bad but if you want to set this manually I'll show you how so at the moment 
our autopilot is working in manage mode. The aircraft is doing everything for us. If I decide to tell it that, yes, we will climb to 18,000 feet, but I only want to climb at 2,500 feet per minute, we pull the switch. That means it's now in an open climb. So the aircraft will climb, but not to any predetermined value. Once you pull this switch, you're now in, in control of the vertical speed. And you can see here that that's picked up just there as well. Past 10,000 feet, so landing lights off. So the aircraft now will continue climbing to 18,000 feet at a rate of uh, 2,500 feet per minute. You'll notice, once again, we've not touched the auto throttle since we took off, and we leave the throttle levers here in the climb detent. We will not touch these again now until we are 20 feet from touching down. All that will be explained a little bit later on. But uh, we told the aircraft how fast we wanted to fly when we entered our uh, our cost index. That tells us how much fuel tells the aircraft how much fuel we expect it to burn, how fuel efficient we want it to be. Basically, the higher that number, the more fuel it's going to burn. You'll notice now. Did you see the speed just disappear then down to zero? That is caused by ice blocking the pitot tubes which tells the uh, aeroplane how fast it's flying. You can prevent that by putting the probe heat on just there. You'll also notice we've got other anti-icing here which can turn on off. I'm not sure yet just how well that's modelled in, uh, in the flight simulator. The visual effects look very impressive, however I think they are exaggerated somewhat. So if you change the range here, that basically just gives you a bigger view on where we're going. Look, there's Manchester, all the way up there. Alright, so what I'm going to do now while the aircraft's climbing and uh, flying along its predefined route is we are going to enter the information we need to land. So I said in the last video that this bit of information was wrong. We're not going to land on 23 left, we're going to land on runway 23 right. So we need to tell the, uh, tell the aircraft that that's what's going to happen. You can hear the engine rolling back because we're approaching our cruise altitude. So, in order to set the uh, arrival runway, click on the destination, Manchester, and click on arrival. Now we're going to make an ILS approach and a lot of people I see asking how on earth do you find the frequencies for the, uh, for the ILS approaches at uh, various airports? Well, for the A320 you don't have to. You set the approach and the aircraft database knows the frequencies. You don't need to go looking for them. So we're going to do an ILS approach into runway 23 right. And you'll notice here that on the navigation display, the green line changes to yellow. That basically means this is the new route that you're telling me you want me to fly. Are you sure? Do you want to confirm that? Well, no, not yet. But basically, and if you look here as well, this is where we start to get some navigation problems because it goes off on a tangent there. Goodness knows where that's headed to. Uh, but we'll have a look at that in a little moment. So, oops. There we are. We also want to enter the star that we're going to fly, which the star here was Dane 2 Alpha. So I just scroll for that. Not to be confused with day, daily. 
There we are. Dane 2 Alpha. Click that. And as horrific as that looks, we do want to, uh, to enter that. Now, it says via MCT. Well, that's the Manchester VOR based at Manchester Airport. The real, um, the real star, as far as I remember, does not have you going via the, uh, the Manchester VOR. So I'm just going to try and remove that. No vias. That's not actually made a blind bit of difference, but never mind. Anyway, once we've done that, insert. So what you'll see it's done now is after our last waypoint, which we entered, which was Trent, TNT, it's now entered lots of different ones, look. Which will lead us all the way into... Uh, into the ILS. However, this thing here, let's see if we can find out what on earth that is. So if we go back to plan and zoom right in. So we're currently headed towards Welling from Umlat. The last change actually, we're now headed towards Trent. We've just passed over Welling. Uh, so, well in, then this D312 Echo waypoint, and then it's taking us to the MCT waypoint, which what I'm going to try and do is delete that, just because we don't really want to overfly the airport. Uh, what you would normally get from ATC, though, in real life, if you, you well, in real life, or if you're flying on VATSIM, is the controllers will give you the start, but then they will give you the final approach vectors to intercept the uh, to intercept the ILS. So I'm just going to try and delete this. If you do put something that you want to delete, anyway, here's how to do it from the flight plan menu. That's the one we're going to try and delete. We press clear, and then press MCT. Yeah, that's the problem we've got at the moment. We can't delete. The, uh, the waypoints that are built into the star, but never mind for now. I'm just going to press that again to make sure I don't dele uh, delete anything I don't want to. So don't worry about that. What I'm going to look for is see which waypoint it is that's taking us all the way out to the east. Look at that. So that square there, well that would be interesting to try and fly that, wouldn't it? Well, never mind. We can, uh, we'll, we'll be able to ignore that. The main thing is we've ex we've uh, input the approach and we've input the runway that we're uh, we're going to land on. Of course, flying at night time, we don't get to enjoy all the lovely scenery that uh, the new flight simulator has to offer. You just get to see a lot of reflections, which are also quite nice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you for now while we travel up to Trent and then after Trent we will start to fly the, uh, the star that it's got, uh, got predetermined for us. So I will join you again in the next video somewhere around here on the map where I will show you how to manually fly the ILS approach.